Hello, beta testers. 2022 certainly was a year in which video games were released. If the games featured in this video were girls at a party, they'd all be the apple of your eye. The Adam's apple. My name's Kyle, and these are the suckiest games of 2022. I'm pretty sure you can guess two of them. You know, write it in the comment section, and then edit with what of course they were. Number 5. Diablo Immortal and Overwatch 2. It takes bravery to be this evil. In my day, gamers weren't the pushover shills that they are today, desperate to pop their mouth open like they trying to receive something and clapping for objectively anti-consumer practices. Blizzard bravely didn't just overpromise and underdeliver, shutting down an older game before the new one was even ready. It implemented a battle pass and monetization system somehow worse than Halo Infinite's. I am forced to admit that it's truly so bad that it's worthy of accolade. And to be utterly honest, Blizzard probably deserves the top spot on this list and all the spots on this list. It's out of spite that I put you down here because it's truly pathetic how much you've removed from the superior predecessor the incarnation that people actually liked. On fire, gone. Post-game report, gone. Badges, gone. Sounds similar to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? It's because it is. The only dopamine hit that they want you getting is the one that you're associating with leveling up in their battle pass. Finish the game? No, no, no. Finish the cash shop. Diablo Immortals monetization was so blatantly cancerous that it was clear that they expected pushback. And they knew that just like a corporation deliberately breaking the law because they could just pay fines or throw some lawyers at it later, they knew they'd be able to get away with it. All of it was just a test run for what they're really going to make happen with Diablo 4. Locking characters from play in Overwatch, removing characters because the game's so broken, requiring phone numbers and accounts, what a fiasco. And the only thing sadder are the shills defending Blizzard amidst lawsuits involving mistreated employees? Jesus Christ. And now we're being told that if you want to buy a Harry Potter wizard wand go whoosh Wingardium game, that you're a transphobe? Oh my god. Oh my god. No wonder this industry sucks! And we're seeing the same shit in the fucking TV shows before I get ahead of myself. Number 4. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Listen closely. Bugs and glitches, or as I like to call them, bluggitches, are my bread and butter. I barely have words for how poor quality this Pokemon game is. It's the highest grossing property in the world. <laughs> and there in the distance... Play-Doh Castle. And in true Saints Row fashion here, it's gone back in time. I'm a Generation 1 guy, and I used to carry the shame of helping Pokemon become what it is today, but now, the shame should rest squarely on the shoulders of anyone who buys this trash. Minecraft does better than this. Bloated intro, Play-Doh graphics, stop-motion performance. Why, Lord, why? And the gimmick in this one is even lazier than kaiju Pokemon. They they get shiny. That's it. They they, they be they be shining. <laughs> Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Oh. Frame rate dips and unrendered textures are sadly only half of the reason that this game is so ugly. Because even Pokemon had to go woke. This Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is kind of like the new school Harley Quinn where they try to make her ugly because they gotta go full Saints Row. All these years I thought video games couldn't make people violent, but these past few years, they fully turned me around. Even normie shills that praise everything quickly flipped their opinion like a light switch when they saw how much people were willing to watch content with opinions mirroring their own sentiment. And Pokemon, you have failed. Nintendo lacks discipline and has forfeit its honor for shame.
Number 3. Modern Warfare 2 2022. This will seem controversial to anybody who's never seen any of my streams, but imagine if you will, spending 3 to 10 minutes matchmaking for what's supposed to be a popular game. You get into the lobby, and without fail, it's one of these two maps, the worst maps in the game by far. You cannot vote, even if you stay in the lobby for the next match because they took that ability away and every lobby post any game immediately disbands. Something Infinity Ward was scared enough pre-launch to lie and say might not, maybe, potentially happen sometimes? Awful user interface, one of the worst battle passes I've ever seen, zero legacy maps opting instead to rerun the 2019 maps from Modern Warfare 1, the smallest maps of course, because those are the ones people actually like, with Infinity Ward being too stupid to understand that their maps are too big. Compound this issue with problems that make perks like Fast Hands and Hardline delayed, so every map is like hide and seek, since Infinity Ward has decided that for the first time in over a decade of these games that unsuppressed weapon fire should not appear on the minimap, and in response to the backlash at this stupid decision, your response was, you don't want to punish shooters? in your shooter game. I get it, you're a lady. I get it, your studio's woke. I respect you and your lifestyle. Nigga, you've lost your mind. Can I get a person of color in the fucking position of multiplayer lead? Because I feel marginalized. This is ableist as fuck, bro. Oh, I feel like I can't walk. I feel like I can't think. Can we please get the gun game to make some sense though? No, worst game of the year. Number two, Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights scumbag developers WB Montreal had a game that they delayed a year that failed to run at a stable 30 FPS and they were fully aware, but only decided to admit it after early players made it apparent online. Another game with devs too pussy to operate outside of their echo chamber of a discord, but the Marvel's Avengers comparisons don't stop there. Buggy, garbage performance, empty world, dated gameplay, uninspired, unfinished, and frankly unbelievably poor design makes Gotham Knights the true gaming incarnation of mid. Ice this cake with garbage writing that really seems to be like a Saints Row styled theme these days, and you have one of the most forgettable, overpriced swindles of the year 2022. Be thankful for people defending this room temperature jizz because it helps you know whose future opinions on anything is invalid. If I may leave you with the words straight from these losers' mouths, remember. They don't even like the audiences that they're making products for. They consider themselves better than everything that they're working on and, and wait until you see their version that's actually garbage. <laughs> She's such a fan favorite. People love this character that they kind of want to root for her. For us, we thought, well, that idea of Harley, that's been pretty well explored in a lot of places. So we thought, well, what happens if we take her the other way? Oh, I gotta be zany, I'm your manic pixie. Like, like, she doesn't need to be the manic pixie anymore. She is kind of gotten to a point where she knows who she is. She has a very clear sense of what her identity is. She's going to present herself in this much stronger, kind of developed supervillain way. This Harley Quinn superpower is self-actualization. After years spent working in the shadow of others, she's now unleashing the true Harley on Gotham. Easily triggered losers designing characters. They adopt the philosophy that if it ain't broke, break it. I guess Gotham Knights developers needed a Batmobile wheel on their face to admit to 30 FPS. It might affect people's purchase decision. It might affect which version of the game they might want to get or whether they're getting this game at all only a week before launch and only sharing this information via Discord in a sort of very low-key way. 30 FPS. Gotham Knights can't catch a break. 30 FPS. Deceive the fans. What a big mistake. 30 FPS. After delays, how long it 30 FPS. Pre-order money is on the 30 FPS. Now, Gotham Knights is one big ball of pubic hair. Sneaky WB Montreal Rob fans blind. Honorable mentions. Halo Infinite.
Guess everybody finally realized 343 sucks. It only took a couple more broken promises. Midnight Suns. Because even though the gameplay is incredible, the writing drags the experience down at least three points. My God. Get a grip. Yeah, stop hiring these people. Babylon's Fall. Rip. Sonic Frontiers. Good God almighty. I'm hearing Dark Tide has all of this terrible microtransaction garbage in there. Whatever I've missed, write it in the comment section. Shout out uh, to future uh, worst game for Spoken. Shout out to next year's incredible game, Stellar Blade. Whew. Whenever somebody bring up Forspoken, just talk about Stellar Blade. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Like and subscribe, bitch. Number one, Saints Row. How do you like my swimming? Reboot. I'm so glad for this embarrassing disaster that caused Embracer Group stock to tank for a while. The studio ended up being folded into Gearbox every single step of the way. The fans warned these Twitter obsessed, talentless hacks that this sanitized modern take on gangbangers would not work. We're always punching up. We want to be absurdist, we don't want to be mean. Nowadays, we want to laugh with everybody, not at people. You know, it's it's basically, you can be funny and still be decent. Wow, some, dude. Some things we did did not age well, and we're not doing that. What the fuck? A bonus. Actual fuck? What the actual goddamn fuck? Never the actual believe. Actual goddamn uh, motherfucking goddamn fuck. Uh, crap, crap, crap. The last music. God goddamn fucking shit. Crap, there, there might be some music right now. Bitch I don't know. Swipe, Probably is. Swipe, crap, 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 and crap. Please don't be too harsh in the comments. The community manager told fans haters gonna hate that they weren't going to back down, told them to die mad, and if they keep leaving these negative reviews, then they must be terror wished. Boy. With the lackluster everything across the board in this game, including but not limited to its writing, you'd assume only psychosis could make one so deluded. This fool has roasted themselves if the implication is that this is actually great writing, quality stuff, and should be rated highly? Listen to this! During their brunch? If you want a $300 waffle maker, you're gonna help me get the waffle maker. Throw in 20 bucks for a waffle maker. What sort of waffle maker can I get for 35 bucks? The one that makes fucking waffles? Mm -hmm. Hey! <laughs> hey! Right before they walk outside and then steal a car? So, Nina, are we taking your project car? Fuck no, I'm not risking my baby over rent. We're boosting cars from down the street. I, you know, do you think the car might net you enough if you were to sell it or scrap it? Uh, for a waffle maker or even rent money. I love that you're worried about fuel efficiency. Brunch is a time for friends and mimosas. Cringe, for God's sake, man. And maybe that wouldn't be so bad since cringe writing is what Western modern games are trying so hard to make the norm. But with gameplay this clunky and dated and a bizarrely over sanitized Fortnite approach with a game that literally had dildo bats and poop spraying, it's just fun watching how ironically out of touch you are in your inability to make a joke when you volition yourself are a joke bigger than any comedy writer on the planet could ever craft if we all held hands and jacked our brains into one another jacked our brains off onto one another a joke too edgy for you these days crazy man you taking a stand against big titties and jiggle physics sexy walk animations anything that's cis female right because you're triggered because you're insecure what friend are you protecting in this studio that is so antisocial that cats are the only thing that they've ever seen outside of the people that they work with on a fucking Zoom call while you guys were crafting this turd? If anyone keeps review bombing this hard work of a game, I'm going to class you as terrorists. End of story. Hashtag review bomb at Saints Row. Stay mad. Some people out here really think they're above being stood up to by a woman, it would seem. Lol, getting drunk, purely <laughs> getting drunk, purely because I have to go back to work on Monday. In conclusion, Kev isn't Johnny Gat Light. He's his own thing, has way more backstory, 
own personality. Sorry, Gat fans. I love him too, but he was good in moderation. You got a whole game of him and you hated it. It wasn't like the musicals with Satan or anything. Also, die mad. He is shirtless. Coming from the CEO of Kevin Thirst. I always find it uh, charming how uh, it's fine when I guess the women are CEO of Thirst, but if the men enjoy women... Oh my god, the male gaze! Them women better cover up, you know what I mean? Only men can have fun. <laughs> the irony being that the women love titty too, not to mention trans, gay, drag queens, you know, if they had friends, maybe they'd know. Titty to these modern developers, they gotta exclusively target the feminine models and reduce and remove. That's what they did with this reboot. Reduce the variety and shape options that women had. Remove jiggle physics when your decade-old entry had it. Rim jobs, freckle bitches. Uh-uh, gotta tone that down. That's what everybody loved. I'm afraid the insecure, flat-chested drunks at Deep Silver Volition are explosively indicative of the woke echo chamber of dweebs developing games these days that are eager to sabotage any product in the name of their failed attempt at a dated lesson. They gotta educate. And that's going to piss off anybody who bought a game to be entertained. Worst writing I think I've ever seen. The writing let down many of the characters in a variety of ways. The writing is downright terrible. The writing in this is absolutely nauseating. Awful abbey where they all live. It's like some kind of YouTuber house. Have the character Blade speaking like a nigga at a job interview. Want to get your train game on? If not, we can talk a minute. Everyone tells me I've got the gift of gab. How's your mental health? A good portion of this darkness hunting game is mental health and processing intense situations. Dude. Everyone tells me I've got the gift of gab. Blade just said that to me. How is your mental health? And honestly, that's the thing. I would bow to this if it worked for Zoomers, but it doesn't work for anybody. That's what we have to ask ourselves. Who is this for? Yeah, okay. That is something I do know. I do magic. Kill jacked up beasts. I'll probably fly next. Boy, oh boy, did people make it abundantly clear how unimpressed they were by this out-of-touch, lackluster, pitch-tone-deaf writing in this just kicked out the door tech demo for Final Fantasy's new engine. But you know who really does like it? This vanilla white man from Digital Foundry, cause he was so offended by Project Eve's protagonist. Because like they put the camera angles chosen, it just felt like this game seems like a, a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its, you know, like character design. Okay, pretty women are dated according to this it's guy. Like a bit old and, and not flattering i don't think for a modern audience wow for a modern audience in, in comparison to something like forspoken which has you know uh i mean yes it has a much more realistic looking character designs uh it's not these hyper proportioned uh something or another's but white boy saw a nice ass and said hyper proportioned something or another's not only has this gargler roasted himself but inadvertently whatever man or woman he chooses to be with just a plank you know what i mean from ed ed and eddie western gaming you are witnessed we cringe and preemptively piss on the graves that you've long laid in a course for at warp 8. all jokes aside i stand in opposition to these triggered lonely scumbags so terrified of not having all the attention that they advocate against representation for women of all shapes and sizes not some i stand against the hypocrisy of this scumbag and those like-minded who have zero problem with sexy confident gaze stealing scantily clad men but would roll their eyes and huff and puff about a busty woman with a physique she chooses to show off opting to use it before she loses it whether she's curvy or athletic she is harmlessly proud and may put effort into her appearance objectively attractive women have been selling movie tickets earning views for shows live streams youtube these days tiktok twitch twitter the gaming industry is now the most profitable industry, and gorgeous women got them there. <laughs> no matter how much gay hate that you have for them. Cinema, 
culture has evolved over time as we've recognized certain self-imposed restrictions, limited our ability to innovate and grow. These people are censors. Some of these women have become multi-millionaires from their bedroom. And the work that they do is work, regardless of how much less it is compared to these Jordan Peterson-ass niggas out here. It's obvious to some of these people that they have their own definition of equality and what inclusivity means, you know, just for whom they choose. Nah. And these were the five games that sucked this year, you know? How do, how do you, did you... You know, how, how, how would you rate this list on a one out of five scale in the comments? Thank you for watching up until this point and liking the video as well. And if you're not subscribed, you don't want me to visit you, do you? Or would you like that? Would you like the warmth and the gropes? You think you're getting free gropes, dude?